Hello, and thank you for listening in to learn more about the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's proposed regulation changes for redfish. This presentation provides background about the new management approach for redfish and provides an overview of our evaluation of the redfish fishery within the proposed Charlotte Harbor region. As you may have heard, FWC is proposing several redfish regulation changes, and we would like to hear your feedback. This virtual presentation will provide an overview of the new redfish management process and the information used to develop the proposed rules. We'll also let you know how you can provide comments on the proposed changes. Redfish is one of Florida's most iconic and popular recreational fisheries. However, over the past few years, FWC has heard a variety of concerns about this fishery. To address these concerns, we're implementing a new management approach that incorporates a holistic review of ecological and human factors to evaluate the fishery on a finer regional scale. To implement this new management approach, FWC is proposing to create nine management regions. This will allow greater flexibility for addressing smaller scale issues, concerns, and preferences. FWC used six management metrics to evaluate the redfish fishery in each of these proposed management regions. The results of these evaluations, as well as stakeholder feedback, were used to inform the proposed regulation changes we'll discuss in this presentation. Throughout the development of the new redfish management approach and the proposed regulations, FWC staff has used a variety of approaches to gather stakeholder feedback. Stakeholder input is a critical component of fisheries management. Public engagement included an angler satisfaction survey, the first ever redfish summit, public workshops, and public comment opportunities at commission meetings. The public workshops on the proposed rule changes are a continuation of our public engagement efforts to ensure that those interested in the management of redfish have the opportunity for their opinion to be heard. As stated earlier, FWC is implementing a new holistic management approach to incorporate regional differences in environmental and human factors into the management of redfish. This requires the establishment of the nine proposed regions shown on the map. These proposed management regions were designed based on differences in habitat characteristics, identifiable geographic boundaries, stock assessment regions, and stakeholder and FWC law enforcement feedback. Establishing smaller regions would allow greater flexibility to address local issues. Using feedback from previous stakeholder engagement, FWC selected six management metrics to evaluate the redfish fishery in each region. These metrics include escapement, harmful algal blooms, stakeholder feedback, fishing effort, habitat trends, and relative abundance. Before getting into the management metrics, I would first like to describe the boundaries of the proposed Charlotte Harbor region using the map on the slide. The northern boundary is located near the Venice Municipal Airport and the region extends south to near Vanderbilt Beach Road. We evaluated the redfish fishery in the proposed Charlotte Harbor region using the new management metrics. A summary of this evaluation is captured in our new annual reviews. Data used for each metric are collected from a variety of partners. Each region will be evaluated annually with the most recent available data. To access this annual review and the annual reviews for the other regions, visit myfwc.com slash fishing slash saltwater slash recreational slash red dash drum slash. Over the next few slides, we will take a deeper dive into the evaluation and highlight some of the metric evaluation results FWC considered when developing the proposed regulations. The first metric is escapement, which was originally the only metric previously used to evaluate the redfish fishery. The statement evaluates the impacts of fishing by estimating the percentage of fish surviving through the slot limit compared to an unfished population. The current escapement target is 40%, which provides a buffer over the 20% sustainability limit that enables the stock to be resilient to unexpected events. Escapement is estimated by the stock assessment, which is updated every four to six years. The stock assessment calculates escapement for all of Southwest Florida which includes the proposed Tampa Bay, Sarasota Bay, Charlotte Harbor, and Southwest regions. The escapement trend for that larger region has drastically increased since 2017 
due to the temporary catch and release measures that were established in 2018. Escapement has remained above the management target throughout most of the time series. The next metric is harmful algal bloom frequency and duration, specifically for red tide. Red tide releases neurotoxins that can kill marine life, including redfish. Red tide data are routinely collected statewide by FWC and roughly 60 partners. In the Charlotte Harbor region, red tide has occurred every year in the past 20 years. During that time period, the average bloom duration at concentrations that could impact fish species was three to five months on average. In 2021, however, the duration was two times longer than the average duration. This resulted in an extension of the executive order to temporarily make redfish catch and release only as a proactive response to potential red tide impacts to redfish. An important component of fisheries management is stakeholder feedback, which is the next metric used to assess redfish. One of the ways we collected public feedback was through an angler satisfaction survey of recreational license holders and charter captains. We are going to repeat the survey every two to three years. Results from the 2021 survey indicated that respondents from the Charlotte Harbor region had mixed satisfaction with their recent fishing experience. The majority of private recreational anglers were more positive and rated their recent fishing experience as fair or good. In comparison, the majority of for hire captains had a wider range of responses and rated their recent fishing experience as poor, fair, or good. An overview of the response to this question from the Charlotte Harbor region is shown in the pie charts on this slide. Once the proposed regulations were announced, we did not receive many responses from this region. For those who did respond, all preferred catch and release only. Fishing effort and landings are important characterizations of a fishery, and for this reason, it's the next metric. Fishing effort and landings information is collected by NOAA's Fisheries Marine Recreational Information Program. This program uses information gathered from anglers to estimate the landings, releases, and effort for recreationally targeted marine fish species. Fishing effort in the Charlotte Harbor region has been generally consistent over time with occasional pulses of increased effort. The decline in landings shown on the bottom graph is due to the temporary catch and release regulations that were enacted for this area following a severe red tide. Habitat is critical to all fish species and therefore is another metric being used to evaluate the redfish fishery. Specifically, we examine the extent of seagrass, salt marsh, and mangroves because these habitats are essential for redfish foraging and refuge. We acquired habitat data from over 50 different collaborators throughout Florida and evaluated the change in acreage of each habitat over time for each region. The Charlotte Harbor region has experienced recent and long-term declines in seagrass habitat in the northern portions of the estuary. There are also reports of seagrass decline in the southern portion of the estuary, but that data is not currently available. There are also local concerns regarding the increasing presence of filamentous algae and its impact on seagrass, the local fishery, and water quality. Saltwater marsh area has increased recently and over time, and mangrove swamp area has been stable or increasing. The last metric, relative abundance, can inform how a fish population responds to different ecological stressors such as extreme weather events and changing environmental conditions. FWC's Fisheries Independent Monitoring Program, often referred to as FIM, conducts sampling in several estuaries around the state. The data from the sampling are used to develop relative abundance trends for redfish that are less than a year old, these fish are also called young of year, and legal sized redfish. FIM sampling within this region is conducted within Charlotte Harbor and nearby rivers. The top graph represents young of year sampled using river set nets. The middle graph represents young of year sampled using bay set nets. The abundance trends indicate the 2017 through 2019 prolonged red tide did not have a long-term impact on redfish, and young of year and legal sized redfish abundance recently improved. All the information I just went over was used to inform the proposed regulation changes. But before I get to the proposal, I want to make sure you are aware of the current regulations. There are currently three management regions shown in the map on the slide. In the Northwest and South management regions, anglers are limited to a one fish bag limit for redfish. 
In the Northeast Management Region, the bag limit is two fish. Statewide, the only gear that are allowed to be used to harvest redfish are hook and line and cast net. The slot size limit includes an 18-inch minimum and 27-inch maximum. In addition to the bag limit, there are vessel and transport limits. Regardless of the number of people on a vessel, no more than eight redfish may be on board. When in transit on land, no person may transport more than six fish. Captain and crew are allowed to maintain a personal bag limit when on a for hire trip. Commercial harvest from Florida state waters and all harvest from federal waters are prohibited. There are also temporary regulations in effect for a portion of Southwest Florida put in place following a severe multi-year red tide that make redfish catch and release only through August 31st, 2022. Using the new management approach, we are proposing some regulation changes that will impact the highlighted regulation. Here are the proposed rule changes that would impact the Charlotte Harbor region. First would be the establishment of the Charlotte Harbor region. Within this region, FWC proposed to maintain the daily bag limit to one fish per person and decrease the vessel limit to two fish. The proposed statewide rule changes would prohibit captain and crew from retaining a bag limit when on a for hire trip and reduce the transport limit to four fish per person. These proposed regulations were developed using stakeholder feedback and by evaluating the redfish fishery using the management metrics that we covered during this presentation. We'd like your input on the proposed regulations and any suggestions you have for management. We are interested in all feedback, but most importantly, we'd like to know why you would support or oppose the proposed regulations. Let us know what you think by visiting myfwc.com slash saltwatercomments and leave us a comment. Please make sure to select redfish as the topic when filling out the form. Before concluding, I'd like to provide you some information on our public engagement efforts in June 2022 and what's up next. FWC held 12 in-person workshops throughout Florida in June 2022. The locations of the workshops are indicated by the stars in the map. This recording is one of nine presentations that was created for each management region, which can be found on our website, myfwc.com slash fishing slash saltwater slash rulemaking slash workshops. Staff will continue to meet with interested stakeholders to get feedback on the new management approach and the proposed regulations. If you are interested in coordinating a small group meeting, contact staff by email at marine at myfwc.com. As mentioned, we are also gathering public comment online through our Saltwater Commons page. Please visit myfwc.com slash saltwatercommons to submit a comment. After gathering feedback, staff will present the final rule recommendations and public comment to the commission. This is currently scheduled for the July 2022 commission meeting. That concludes this presentation and thank you everyone for taking the time to listen in. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact staff at marine at myfwc.com.